Hi there everyone, so um, today I'm in the Mark II Rare 5 of, of, of mine, 1985 5GTL. Um, now, this car you've seen a few times on the channel, not very often though. Well, basically, I've spent, um, at the start of lockdown, I pulled her apart, need overdue work. Um, eventually got around to doing it after sort of taking some time away from it because it was just very overwhelming seeing the state it was actually in. Um, but I've now done the welding work. Um, it's got a pair of donor front wings on it. Um, the last piece of puzzle I'm now looking for is an engine because this one is completely shot. It's got piston slack galore um, and just generally speaking, it sounds really rough. So yeah, it sounds incredibly rough. Um, believe me, when you when you drive it and you're getting the revs up, it it feels like you've got a single engine mounting in the car. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, basically, I'm looking for um, any size engine from 956 to 1397 non-turbo because I've never liked the idea of putting a turbo in this car. It's just she's perfect as she is. Um, and if I can find any five-speed gearbox, I'll be really appreciative as well because um, at the moment she's got a four-speed that was actually originally mounted to the one lead we put in her eight years ago. And um, although it's um, been soldier on like a blooming warrior, um, it would be nice to have fifth gear to stick her in when you're cruising at say 70 mile an hour, just drop the revs a bit more and make it all that bit nicer. So yeah, I'm looking for a, um, essentially either a JB5 gearbox or generally just a five speed gearbox that will fit the car. Um, I think other ones you have to change the drive shafts and the front gearbox mounting just to make things line up all down, all due to the um, differential offset and stuff like that. So yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm looking for an engine and a gearbox for a um, Mark II Rare 5. So if anyone out there has got one, um, I am very much looking for one. <laughs> Don't expect to get it for free, that would be absolutely outrageous. Um, obviously I am willing to pay for it, but I'm um, just putting the fears out there because I'm really, really desperate to um, get this girl back the road because um, the McGann was a um, temporary car really for the winter. Um, and I'm rather missing this, so um, I want to be able to get the McGann out the way and get this one back on the road. But to do that, I need an engine and gearbox to do it. So, if you can help, um, please do get in touch. Um, I'm located in sort of the southeast Essex area. Um, obviously, at the minute, travelling isn't entirely allowed. So, um, if someone has got one that's fairly close by, it will probably just be passable because obviously it is for an essential vehicle. So, yeah. Um, if you've got anything, uh, please do get in touch. Thank you very much. days we've finally got ourselves an engine and gearbox for the red 5 um, it's a c3j with a jb1 gearbox it's actually out of a later five campus prima but um, the only difference really is the fact that the primas have an electric fuel pump so they blank off the mechanical one down here um, it's got a single port mono port injection which you just literally take off and you belt your manifold and carburetor straight back on um, and it just uses the same electro ignition so you literally just use the ignition module that's already on the car, plug it on via the king lead, off you go. Um, the only thing I need to do is check the clutch on it is okay and not seize the far wheel. Um, put a new thermostat in it just purely for good measure. Might have to change other little things like um, temperature sensor over here. But generally speaking this came out of a uh, good running car not, not more than 18 months ago. Um, so hopefully theoretically it's going to be a good little runner. So if we look inside there, it looks pretty blooming clean really. It's not very really all gunged up too much. So I think we should hope to be lucky with this engine. Fingers crossed. Um, it's a freebie that came up in the owners club yesterday. And basically because I'm really desperate to get my car back the road, I thought stuff it. Let's just get it. It's worth a punt to give it a try. It's going to cost the amount of petrol it takes me to drive there and back. So sod it, let's just do it. Um, the gearbox is five speed. Um, being a 1.4, um, I think that should give it some really good ratios. Um, I did previously have a, um, a five speed from 11.085 and the issue with that really was the fact the ratios were a bit low because it was designed for the 11.08 engine. Um, as a 1.4 gearbox that's come off of this one originally, in theory it should have some really good ratios which should mean that when you cruise at like 70 mile an hour down the motorway, 
you've got a nice low rev, which is really what you want so it doesn't scream itself down the road all the time. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, now I'm just sort of um, starting to the very basics of getting the old engine out. Here is the old lump. Uh, as I say, it's an old C3J, and all I've literally done is you take the manifold and carb off, bolt it straight back on the next engine that's got the injection on it. So, you just sort of backdate the engine, really. Um, so in terms of this one, uh, be keeping the top hose because you probably saw that one, the top hose is absolutely knackered. Um, well, obviously the alternator and general auxiliary bits, but generally speaking, it's just the engine that we're getting rid of. So um, pretty straightforward, really. You just need to take both um, radiator hoses off like I've already done the top one. Pull that back and you get the radiator out. You just pull it straight out after you've taken this off. Comes out with the bottle or unless you get that pipe there off. Um, once we've got the alternator off and obviously all the pipe work that attaches it to the matrix and stuff on the car um, take the exhaust off the manifold down there you've got the gear linkage that comes up to about here underneath the gearbox and then we'll literally just need to um, drag the front end of the car put it on the stands um, pull the um, disconnect the struts from the hubs which will then enable us to basically rock the two outward like so. It will be a case of just undoing these bolts on the um, gearbox housing here. So that roll pin out the other side. And then with both hubs undone, you just pull both out. And the um, drive shafts pull straight away from the gearbox. And then it's just a matter of literally unbolting the mountings here at the back there on the other side. And we can lift it out. Um, I think we're recording one of these engines is about five hours on my own. So, yeah, shouldn't in theory take me too long now. So, happy days indeed. Um, it's easier generally to take the bonnet off of these because otherwise you've really got to struggle getting over the height of the wings. And the wings are, if I show you sort of, that's where the bonnet is and the wings are lot up here. So, it is quite a considerable difference and it can make it very awkward on the angle it lands in if you go over the side of the wing. So... But it's so simple, it's a matter of these bolts here. And then if that's attached, you just need to remove that from, I think it's normally, it's there, look, riveted to there normally. So yeah, really simple these cars, absolutely love them for that. So let's crack on. As I explained in my last video, um, I have got a record for getting these in and out of a five of about five hours, and that is solo. And that was last time using an old bolt and um, an old bolt hoist. So. You can imagine how well and rapidly I must have been working. Um, but on this occasion, because I've got time and I haven't got to get the car back together today or tomorrow, what I'm just going to do is first, you'll notice all this here is just all covered in crud, where it's just essentially just, it's just sat in someone's garage. So what I'm going to do first is actually, I've got it up on the hoist right now, as you can see. And what I'm going to do to start with, before I even think about taking the car apart, is um, cover it all in degreaser, get the jet wash out, and let's just make this block and ge just general the engine as a whole look a bit more presentable. Because why not? If we've got the time to do it, I might as well make it look a bit nicer. Because then when it all goes back in the car, it will look a lot more presentable. Rule number one before you wash any engine, as usual, cover up any holes such as water pipes or anything like that. Because you don't want the dirt getting inside. That will just cause issues later. Um, stuff like the exhaust manifold for example cover that up that there isn't actually a hole it's just literally a um, hot air feed for the um, air box so that doesn't matter because it's not actually going inside the engine but obviously the throttle body up here which is our um, single port injection um, you do not want that getting water in because obviously that goes straight into the internet manifold here and you will have at least one valve that is likely to be open in from access within that so basically you need to keep that area nice and sealed up so yeah doing a whole lot of quick spray over with a bit of wd-40 don't know if it's going to make any difference but um i'm about to chuck some extra soap point now anyway with a jet wash so yeah hopefully by the time i finish it'll look really nice Yeah, that's it, that's it, yeah. 